Guys, today I want to talk to you about Polyface Designs. This is a book written by Joel Salatin and Chris Slattery, and it is fabulous. We built our first chicken tractor from scratch and a lot of scratching our heads and just figuring out designs based on other things we'd seen on YouTube and the internet. But when it came time to build our second one, because we were ready to do 100 broilers at once instead of just 50, uh, we wanted to do something more official, and I was dreading the thought of building something again that took as long as the first one had. So when I heard uh, Joel Salatin talking about this book, I looked into it, and I think we paid about $125 for it, but it was well worth it. If you are good with Legos, you will be able to build the designs in this book. I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to show you because of copyright things, but I, I hope they don't mind. What you have in this book is at least 13 different structures step by step. Uh, there is a lot of other information. As you can see, there's far more than 13 things in here having to do with chickens, cows, pigs, rabbits, turkeys, hoop houses, and lots of other things, watering systems, feeding systems. It was so handy uh, reading through the information in this book. Now, what I was building, the chicken tractor, was the first design in this book. And you can see in this book, they lay out everything you're gonna need. You got tools here, and then they give you a cut list, all the boards, board sizes, hardware, and then they go step by step. And they show you the blue ones, that's what you're adding to it. The wood colored ones, that's what you already have, and you're adding this. If you can do Legos, you can follow these instructions. The only difference is, You've got to go out and buy the Legos, big size, and then cut them down to their appropriate sizes. Not too hard. And I'm gonna show you in this video how we did that and how simple it was. As much water maybe a little more than half as much water in this chicken tractor that our chickens in our original chicken tractor went through because we were running them side by side and our chickens that were under the aluminum shade drank so much less water because they were not overheating nearly as much as the ones that i had in the open shelter uh, or you know had a canvas top to it so this was great, and I'm so glad we went with the aluminum, even though it's expensive. So I highly recommend this build. You're gonna see me go through it piece by piece. Uh, you're not gonna get to see me finish it, but you've seen it already on my channel if you've watched any of my shorts over the summer when we were running the chicken tractors and posting updates on them. Uh, and I'll show you a few clips at the end of the video. You'll see the roofing, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is the framing build, uh, and then the roofing should be pretty self-explanatory. If it's not, Post me a comment in the questions, and I'll go through it step by step. But I hope you guys enjoy this video, and Polyface, great job on this book. You saved me so much time, and I'm so excited to share about this and my experience with this book, and I'm only one project into this. So thank you for putting this together, Joel, Chris, everyone else involved. This was great, so handy, so helpful, and I've learned so much by using this as a guide for what we're trying to do here on our homestead. On to the hardware. All right, so these have 184 pieces in them. Really? Well, at least I used to. What? what kind of put back on the shelf top is this? What do you think we're going to do with them?
All right, babe, how much do you think all that cost? Uh, 300. 300? And what was my guess? 240. 240, 246. Uh, I was close, but I forgot about the packages, the nuts, and the washers. It's 25811. So, under 300. I'm happy about that. So, no fancy jigs or rigs here. I uh, just need a square here, a quick square, and a pencil or pen. Uh, a two by four is not four inches wide. It is three and a half inches wide. So you're gonna split that in half uh, for this cut. So that's one and three quarters inches. So you can make sure that's one three quarter by marking it on this side and then flipping your square over. And again, one three quarters on this side. So we know that's right in the middle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put some pressure with the tip of our pencil and let our pencil kind of ride in this crevice here. And we're gonna go forward. And if that doesn't make a dark enough line, it's just barely there, it'll be easier to make a line going backwards. Most of the wood we were using was a little bit too wet for a line to take with either a pen or a pencil. So ultimately I reverted to using some duct tape and I lined it up with the outside edge of the board and that would put my saw just where I wanted to make my cut. Okay, nice. All right, so on a cut like this, I just want to show you guys, you line up your pencil mark with your groove, you go to bring the saw blade in contact with it, but by the time the saw is touching the wood, you can no longer see your pencil mark. So what I do is I look in here, and I'm gonna start the blade, and I'm gonna see where the blade starts just nicking the wood. And from there, I'm gonna adjust forward or backwards where I need to be so that my board is the right length. Here, I'll show you. Alright guys, never trust your guard when you're going to put your saw down. All right, I've heard it happen where somebody's putting their saw down. It's an old saw maybe or there's a lot of sawdust in there. The guard stays stuck up. They put it down, the saw runs. I've heard of a lot of leg injuries cutting right up the thigh there. So just make sure as you're setting down your saw, either let it come to a complete stop here. It'll happen quickly because it's rubbing against the wood. Alright, or if you're going to set it down, double check the guards down. Set maybe it off to the side so the blade's not in contact with anything. Or just wait for it to stop. It's not worth the injury or the accident. Guys, this is so exciting. I have all these boards cut in just a matter of, I mean, a few minutes of cutting. It took a little while to go to the store and get it all, but and I, I mean, I've hardly had to give this any thought. I won't, I'll hardly be able to take any credit for when this tr chicken tractor is built. This is so awesome. I can't tell you how much time I'm saving by having this book, being able to just follow the cut list. And you know, next I'll just be slapping it together, putting it together. And I've hardly thought about it at all. Obviously I have to think about safety. I have to think about do I have enough supplies, but I really just have to go and get what they're telling me to get and put it together. And then boom, it'll be done. This is the fastest, construction project I've ever done. Everything else has always taken literally days and because of how my brain works and my procrastination and you know weeks of planning and pencil sketches on paper that are nothing impressive but helps me think about a project. project. Alright guys the plans call for one and a quarter inch deck screws um, going through the one inch board here and one inch board there. Now, obviously this is a full one inch. It's pretty close though. Anyways, when you take the one and a quarter, you have maybe a quarter inch at best that um, penetrates through the one board into the bottom board. And that's not much to hold on a, on a screw tip there. Like quarter inch, that's nothing. That's like two threads. So I'm gonna be switching up and using the one and five eighths. That way I get some more Let's show you here the penetration. When this screw is sunk in here, you have almost half the screw that's going into the next one. Um, you know, unless you're sinking those one and a quarters like super into the wood, which you're not really supposed to do with these. You're supposed to flush them up essentially, maybe a slightly under flush here, so you don't, you know, cut your sandpaper on the tips. But if you're sanding something, not that we are. I'm gonna sturdify this, make it more sturdy. 
Oh man, they're just moving on. How's that possible? Angulation for the win. All right, we're gonna make two of these. These are our sidewalls, and uh, we'll see what else we do. All right, guys. Here's a life and marriage tip for anyone out there who cares to listen to me. My wife and I are looking at the instructions and I don't know if the drawing isn't perfectly to scale. I'd like to think it's that, the, the drawing's fault. But I was looking at the book upside down, pretty sure I had it all figured out, um, that the 24 inch boards went on the outside, I was arguing. And she was insisting that they were on the inside. And I, in my mind, though I did not say it, was really thinking she has very little construction experience. I have so much compared to her. I know what I'm talking about. And um, she said, you're looking at it upside down. I say, so what? I can tell. And she flipped the book upside down and the drawing changed. I swear, the drawing changed. The 24 inch board is going inside. My wife was right. And so I just want to say, perspective is very important. And two people can be looking at the exact same thing, especially if you're married people and you're arguing with each other and you can have very different perspectives. And it's important to get on the same page and find, uh, find a way to look at the same way so you understand Save you a whole lot of stress and problems in your life and your marriage. That's all right. Can you, uh, you, you got it, bud. You're great. Just one. Thank you. Oh, I work so hard, my gloves get torn. All right, we got that one in. Let's go get this end one in. You want to come over here, Isaiah? Three more? Perfect. That's all I need. I'm ready for the next one. Yeah, I did it, Dad. Thank you. Oh, I need more screws. Nope, we don't. I need more for, for the line. But we're not ready. Yes. We're not there yet. Thank you. Mama, I got two oh, more screws. You, you do? Where are they? Oh, wow. Good job. Good help. Yeah. Ready for one new screw. One new screw for you. On your hands, dance. Yeah. Alright, put it in. Your finger's not a screw. <laughs> My finger's not a screw. Revelation of the God. We interrupt this woodworking project for an update on egg production. Look at the size of that thing. All right, guys, this is gonna be the fun part. Now I've got to stand up these two. These are gonna be my sides. Then I've got these two, which are gonna be these sides. And I've got to make this big old box by myself and make sure no one gets injured. Of course, that's my highest priority. No accidents on the job site. It's not worth it. Let's see if we can get this done. guys, if there was ever a time in my life where I was trusting the process, it's certainly right here. I've done no planning, very little thinking, just looking at pictures and copying what I see. And we're about two hours into this, and I've got almost every board I need cut. I got my frame all set up here. It's going so fast. This is amazing.
matches strapping. Partly because my am I that fat? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. We are learning tons as we are getting more and more into homesteading, gardening, and I hope you guys are learning along with us. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.